Well, it's never so simple, is it? Wisdom has a price. And there's always a part of you that changes. Every time we've seen Sunua's saga Hellblade 2, it's looked solid. Maybe it hasn't blown anyone away, which to some might actually mean it's looked disappointing, but for those who enjoyed the first game, it's looking like a sequel that's going to deliver well in similar ways. As Microsoft continues its search to notch up wins for its expanded first-party portfolio, Sunua Saga Hellblade 2 is the game that both it and its community have frequently looked at, and it does seem like it will make good on those expectations. But while that's true, it's been a little staggering seeing the way that Microsoft has marketed the game, because the messaging has been really wildly inconsistent, to say the very least. After being touted as a big tentpole first-party release for years, the messaging around Ninja Theory sequel has, as of earlier this year, abruptly and jarringly pivoted away, with Hellblade 2 now being billed as a smaller game, and the whiplash has raised a few eyebrows, to say the least. We first saw Hellblade 2 over four years ago, when Microsoft officially announced it at the Game Awards in December 2019, and though no gameplay was shown, it certainly made an impression. For starters, the very simple fact that a game as unique and beloved as the original Hellblade was getting a sequel was exciting, while the game's debut trailer itself also left quite a mark, what with the promise of a radical technical leap forward. The promise of a Hellblade game that would have the full backing of Microsoft as a big tentpole first-party release was implicit in that trailer, and in the years that followed, that promise was repeatedly made several more times. Do something. Ask. What do you want me to do? Since Ninja Theory first joined the Xbox Game Studios lineup, many assumed that the studio would be filling a significant gap in Microsoft's portfolio with big, cinematic, single-player action-adventure games, the kind that we see in abundance from teams under the PlayStation umbrella. And naturally, those expectations latched onto Hellblade 2 by default. Microsoft, meanwhile, continued to stand Hellblade 2 up as a major first-party blockbuster to look forward to as well, which further cemented higher expectations around the game to the extent that many were wondering if a bigger Hellblade experience of a larger scale and with more budget backing it would still be able to retain the singular focus and restraint that made the first Hellblade game as good as it was. This place of fear and fury. Do you hear it? The heartbeat of the lost ones. That messaging, however, has changed in recent weeks. Sunua's Saga Hellblade 2 was one of several first-party titles to be showcased at Microsoft's Xbox Developer Direct presentation in January, and it was hard not to come away confused about what was revealed of the game. And that's not because the game itself didn't look good. No, it actually looks promising, especially if you like the original Hellblade, but because the messaging around the game has suddenly changed. Hellblade 2 is not going to be the large-scale sequel that many had assumed it would be, nor is it going to be a full-priced game. No, when it launches in May, it will be a digital-only release being sold for $50 and will be about as long as the first game. Now, on paper, there's actually plenty to be pleased about with that announcement, and I'll get to that in a bit, but the sudden shift in how Microsoft is talking about the game deserves some scrutiny. Is this what Hellblade 2 was always going to be? And there would be nothing wrong with that if that were the case, for the record. But why have we spent the last four years seeing it as being positioned as this big AAA tentpole release, one that's going to serve as a centerpiece in the Xbox Game Studios portfolio? If Microsoft always knew that the game was being designed as another focused small-scale experience that would adopt a philosophy of focus and restraint like its predecessor did, why did marketing suggest that it was instead going to be a full-priced, shiny blockbuster release until just a few months before launch? Now, is it actually a bad thing for the game itself that it's essentially going to be more of the same? At least based on what we've seen of the gameplay thus far. Not necessarily. In fact, many will tell you that having a wider scope and trying to tell a more large-scale story would probably have clashed with Hellblade's core sensibilities. A sequel that continues to focus on Sunua's character, her personal journey, and her own struggles is what most fans of the first game would probably want regardless. At the same time, 
Plenty of people will also tell you that in areas like the combat and puzzle design, the original Hellblade had a lot of room for improvement, so hopefully these are areas that the sequel will address regardless of its scale. It also has to be said that a major first party studio's big new release being a shorter, smaller game that will be priced lower and will be about 7-10 to 10 hours long is incredibly refreshing to see especially in an industry where issues like rising prices, rising development costs, and bloated experiences are growing increasingly prominent. Of course, we don't really know how much money was poured into Hellblade 2's development and marketing. Given the fact that it's been in the works for several years, we can probably assume that it's been a much costlier endeavor than their first game, especially with Microsoft's full backing. But a major first-party studio putting out a cheaper price game that will last 8 hours? Yeah, we do need more of that, and hopefully Hellblade 2 will be successful enough to show publishers throughout the industry that there's value to the business model as well. Your mind. Your voices. All the parts of you that are broken. You can be whole. All the grief. All the rage. All the fear. Everything I've seen. Clearly then, there's no shortage of reasons to be optimistic about Hellblade 2. The game itself has looked solid each time it's been shown off, and if Ninja Theory can recapture the magic of the first game while also making meaningful improvements in the areas like the combat and puzzles, Sunua's Saga has every chance of turning out to be a major win for the Xbox Game Studios lineup. What has been much shakier, however, has been Microsoft's messaging around the game. Seemingly unable to decide whether Sunua's Saga Hellblade 2 is a AAA blockbuster or an art house sequel, the company has decided that it's somehow both and in the process, it's muddied the conversation around the game in ways that have had a noticeable impact on its pre-release hype cycle. When the publisher itself doesn't know how to talk about a game, how are the fans or the potential fans? If you like the original Hellblade, should you expect a sequel that mostly sticks to what it did, or should you expect something much bigger and grander in scale? If you didn't like the original Hellblade, should you expect a sequel that you will be able to get into? Well, thanks to Microsoft, answers to these critical questions have been unclear at best, and it's hard to imagine how that's going to be good for the game, even though the game itself is looking like it's going to be a well-made experience. I know you. He needs you. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.